हे गाइस बिकॉज ओवर हियर एंड दिस इज वेरी जीनियस गाइस टुडे आई एम विथ अ न्यू वीडियो अराउंड ओनियन ओमेगा 2 वी विल सी हाउ टू कॉन्फिगर द ओमेगा 2 बाय यूजिंग द कमांड लाइन एंड फॉर दिस वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द सीरियल इंटरफेस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द ओमेगा एक्सपेंशन डॉक दैट हैज ऑन बोर्ड यूएसबी टू रिवॉर्ड ब्रिज सो अगेन इफ यू हैव नॉट चेक माय अर्लियर वीडियो ऑन दिस लाइक हाउ टू गेट स्टार्टेड विथ ओनियन ओमेगा 2 बाय यूजिंग वेब इंटरफेस यू कैन चेक आउट दैट फॉर व्हिच आई हैव गिवन द लिंक डाउन बिलो इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन and if you are not successful with the configuration by using web interface which happened to me also couple of times you can continue with this tutorial we will see how to configure the omega 2 by using the serial command line so being said that let's get started guys <laughs> So guys, after plugging in your Omega 2 to the PC by using an USB cable, the first thing you need to check is the dock or the expansion dock is getting detected by your PC. Basically, the USB to UART bridge, which is uh, CP2102 over here, has to be detected by the PC. So to check that out, you can get into my computer, manage, and over here, get into device manager. And if you have uh, like installed the drivers that is required for CP2102, you will, you will see something like uh, like Silicon Labs CP2102 USB2 UART bridge and with some COM port number over here. So if it is not detected, you will see uh, like other ports or device over here listed over here and will not see this like over here under ports. So if that is the case, you can install the drivers that is required for CP2102 depending upon your operating system for which actually I have given the links down below in the description. So if it is not, you can certainly go ahead. And over here, you can just uh, verify if it is uh, like the port is of your uh, like expansion dock or not by plugging or unplugging in. So when you unplug your device, it will vanish from here. So you can make sure it is the right port. And just over here, just note down the port number. Like for me, it is COM15. Now open up any terminal software and now and for this tutorial i am going to use putty and select serial over here and on serial line just put in the just put the com port number just now we like got from over here that is com15 for me and change the baud rate or speed to 11 5 to double zero now click on open and you will see something like this you can just simply hit the enter button and you will see a console like root at omega with the last four digits of your mac id of your omega 2 and again this uh for again these four digits the last four digits of your mac id of your omega 2 is also visible in your wi-fi networks right now you can see over here now the first thing we need to do is to connect the Omega 2 to a uh, Wi-Fi network and make sure the net Wi-Fi network that you are going to connect have internet connection otherwise it will simply will not connect so make sure you have internet connection on the Wi-Fi network that you are interested to connect to so to check out and connect to available Wi-Fi network you can simply use the command Wi-Fi setup and over here you get three options like the can for Wi-Fi networks, you can type network info if we have everything and Q is for exit. So to scan the available Wi-Fi networks, I can simply insert one and hit enter. So this will show you something like scanning for Wi-Fi networks. Now we need to connect to the second network that is for me OK Sviduland 2 and uh, it will detect the and authentication type and it will prompt you to enter the password that is so this is for me and you will see something like wi-fi manager for changes to take effect it has restarted the wi-fi manager so basically this will uh, put some something like this and you will see fpcli link is up now to confirm that you have a uh, like working internet connection you can simply type on ping and you can ping any website right now i'm just pinging google.com to check we have a working internet connection so 
so we have got uh, a like internet up and running now first thing you need to do is upgrade the operating system of your omega 2 to do that you can use the command o upgrade and it will check for the latest version of your firmware available and it will download so this may take some time depending upon your internet speed After everything completes, the LED of your Omega 2 should be constant instead of blinking. So now hit enter and let's see the Omega console again. Now let's type in some command. Yep. Now after that you can install a couple of softwares like uh, some editors like text editor like nano or something and the web console. So over here we are just going to install the web console so we will have the web interface up and running. To do that you can have the command uci set onion dot console dot set of equals one. So this will uh, like change the configuration file and it will set the setup bit to 1 now we can again have uci dot set then onion dot console dot install equals 1 now after that you can just change the interface file by using uco uci commit onion let's see take clear now to install you can use the command console install tool Now this will install the web console interface. Just wait for a couple of minutes till it gets installed. Now the console is installed and we can check that out by connecting to the Omega 2 by using the Wi-Fi. To do that just get into your open network space. Select the Omega like over here it is Omega E7 E7 SSID and these four digits are again same with your mac id of your omega 2 so let's hit on connect enter the password that is 1234 click on ok and if everything goes right we'll see something like this and it will provide you also the internet access so anyway let's open up the browser and you can type in the omega 2 ip that is 192.168.3.1 or you can type in like omega 2 sorry omega then last four digits of your omega 2 mac id dot local and it will take into something like onion console so you can hit the username that is root and the default password that is onion here and it will take you to the web console so again uh, all this you can check yourself or you can refer to my earlier tutorial how to control gpio and all by using the web console so we'll get into that now now if you want to check the firmware installed on your omega 2 you, you can use the command upgrade minus v 
and this will show you the device firmware now if you want to compare with the latest version you can use the command minus c or hyphen c and it will see something like device firmware is up to date now let's do some gpio control and for that you can use the gpio control there is gpio ctl and over here we'll try to like interact with the gpio 15 16 and 17 of the omega 2 as these are connected to the onboard rgb led that is present on the expansion dock so to do that uh, we need to define like use the pin as output so you can use the command gpio control then di route I can have high or low let's say make it high and the GPIO number let's say for us it is 17 so it will make the GPIO pin high as the onboard LED is like low enabled let's make it low and you can see the red LED on the Omega 2 expansion dock will glow Now to control the blue LED, you can simply change this number with 16. Sorry, this will uh, uh, like access the green LED that is connected to GPIO 16. So this will make the green LED glow and you can check that out on the board itself. And for blue, you can, you can use GPIO 15. And you will see the blue LED open glowing. Now let's uh, make everything again high. Uh, let's start with 17. Then 16. And you can see finally it is glowing blue. That is, you can make, an, you can make it off by using 15 number GPA. this is all about uh, like making a gpio output and accessing it now if you want to like make some gpio as input and you want to check it out you can use the command gpio ctl that is the control then dir in then the gpio you want to use let's say uh, any gpio let's say 15 or something and after that you need to use the command get and the pin number sorry you need to have gpio control and it will show you the current status of the pin and it will like current status is pin 15 is slow let's make this pin high and we'll check it out if this works and you can see when the pin is high it is showing us high so like that you can access gpios and you can also actually in uh, like access other features like the UART port, the SPA or I2C port by using the command line. For which, uh, actually for detailed documentation and all, I have given the link down below in the description. You can check out by yourself or I will be coming with um, more videos around it. Or like how to use cell scripting and all to write some basic applications to interact with the other functionalities of the GPIOs and all. So that's all for today guys. Hope you have enjoyed it and you have liked it. If so, hit the thumbs up button and if you have not subscribed to yet to my channel, you can definitely subscribe it. So, see you next time in my next video. Till then, goodbye.